Recently, you were connected with Sydney Starr. Yeah. Okay. I, I know Sydney Starr. Yeah. I I've interviewed her before. Yeah. Um, so what happened with you and Sydney? That's, good. That's my homie. That's some pretty good people, you know. Okay. She showed me a good time in um, Chicago. I showed, I showed her a good time back, you know. Okay. Was that the first time you had been with a transgender? Yes. Okay. So what was that like? It, it was like both the best of both, both best of both worlds. Right. Well, well, Sydney is post-op. Far as? Meaning that she doesn't have a penis. Oh. Uh, I mean, that's what she said. Yeah. Is that not true? If she told you she don't have a penis, well, it's true. Okay. I hit it from the back, so I don't, you know. You don't know. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, she called me back door. Okay. Um, but 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 in Sydney, actually, well, you know, it's interesting because I've interviewed Sydney, and, and Sydney said that gay men they like um, other gay men, and me, I'm attracted to heterosexual men. I can't do nothing with a gay boy, um, but probably get my makeup done by them or have a few drinks and have fun and laugh. <laughs> so um, I would say we don't really even live the same lives either. Like I live my life as a heterosexual woman. You like me though. You guys like each other? Yeah. Relationship? If it happened, it happened, you know. I'm open for it, she open for it. Okay, but a transgender to you is uh, the best of both worlds. Yes. Okay, and you guys are considering possibly making doing doing a relationship, maybe. Well, you know, if it, if it works itself out. Okay. We friends right now, but you know whatever you know in the work, if it happen to happen, if it don't, still gonna be my friend. You know? I mean, do you have a lot of men approach you now? Yes. Yes. And what's that like? Because before, if a man would approach you, they yeah, go to sleep. Now it's just like the, the, oh, you'd actually punch him. I'm straight out. Really? Yeah. Why? I was just like, that's how I was. Always in my life. Like, don't disrespect me. Like, don't do that. Like, But is it disrespectful if a, if a man is back then, to you? Before, like, all this? Yeah. Yes. Explain why. I, I, because I was, I was trying to, like, block. I was trying to be on the cover, so, you know? Okay. I didn't want nobody to. I see. I've always, like, you know, like, like I've always felt like when you have. When certain men get accused of being gay and they have this really angry, violent reaction, um, I always felt like they were hiding something. Like in my whole thing, you know, I used to be like, I used to uh, play it off. I would act real homophobic. Like, yeah. I would like, I ain't like faggots. I don't like, don't know why you looking at me. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like I you know, like I look in the comments sometimes, and people, you know, because I, because we, you know, we do a lot of interviews about yeah. gay topics, and people are like Vlad's gay. He's secretly gay, and I'm like. It's never bothered me to hear that because I'm not gay. So it's like you could say I'm gay all day long and it, it doesn't bother me. Cause but it doesn't matter. I'm not if hiding you, anything. If you like what you like, yeah. well, so what? Yeah, exactly. I'm human. So have you ever actually punched a dude for, for trying to? No, nobody ever did that. Nobody like, ever did like, that. I always have respect. Like, wherever right. I went. But like, you're also pretty big, too. So. This, this, <laughs> since this happened, it's like people been humiliating, humiliating me on the internet. Yeah. This is the internet. Okay. Not my face. But now that you're out in the open, guys approach you and you don't have that type of reaction. No, nah, at all. Okay. You know, I laugh, I smirk. And the day, you know, they go say what they want. They just keep supporting me. Yeah. That's all. And a lot of men have actually DM'd you and said, Yes. Thanks for that, sir, for the for the good word. Help me. Thanks for helping me tell my family, you know, the truth. Oh, so you've actually had men yeah. come out to their families yes. because of you. Because of me, yes. How does that make you feel? Great. And I got, I go real like, I feel though, is the future for me. And, you know, making people feel how they want to feel and come out to their family. You yeah. Know? No, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's hard to live a lie. Yeah. Because you got to lie on top then of Then sometimes the lie can break you. Sometimes it's people they kill themselves because they don't want to be themselves. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of gay gay like, men have like killed themselves. Like when I was on the verge of that. So you thought about suicide? Yes. Yeah. At what point? At the point that the the tape came out? Yeah. 
for my kids. I'm like, I ain't gonna better like get their love or their respect back. Well, it's nothing to live for. How close did you come? Mm, pills. You took some pills every day, taking perks. Percocets. Every day. Every day. And you were trying to overdose. I was just taking. I was like, it happened to happen, you know. So you just didn't care about living. No, I didn't point. care. That's rough, man. That's a that's a, that's a hard. You know, how long did that last for, though? About when I came out here. When it first happened, when I came out here, my whole life changed. So when you were still in Philly? Yeah. I came out here, got with this terrific manager by the name of Anthony Cherry, and it was like, it was like an angel in my heart. Like, so changed you, my life. At that point, no longer wanted to kill yourself. No, changed my life. Learn to love yourself a little yeah. more and so forth. So these days, you're single? Yes. Okay. And would you consider being in a relationship with just, you know, I mean, you talked about Sydney Star, Sydney Star is a, is a transgender. Would you actually consider a full blown relationship with a man? Mm. I, I, I would, I would have, they have to build up to a relationship. I just can't go into a relationship with a man. You know, like, you know, like I've talked to a lot of, a lot of women who are, are bisexual, mm. and, and what I hear a lot is, I like playing with women. You know, I like to, you know, have sex with like right now, I'm just having fun. Yeah. But like, uh, you know, but most women would tell me like, I would never have a relationship with a woman. I, I would, you know, I, I'll sleep with a woman, I'll do threesomes yeah. with a man, but I'll never actually have a relationship. That's how I am right now. I feel like that right now. Right. So, so you would, you... I think because of my children, I don't want my children to see me walking around the street holding hands with a man or something like that. Like, Why? I still got to respect them. Just respect. Like, but, but, they, but they know who you are now. Yeah, but... They used to go to the school. They got to hang around their friends. Like, I don't, I don't want to put them through nothing else. They've been through enough. So you're not free. Huh? You're not free. You still living your life with somebody else. My children? Yes. Uh -huh. But but that's the decision that you made. If you're going to be 100, it shouldn't matter who you love. You're still going off of an image and a look. Obviously, from what I'm hearing. He kind of has a point. So, so your your kids are still keeping you from being a hundred percent comfortable. Yeah, really. I'm comfortable. I just like I don't want to raise him, no man. You talk with your kids. Your Imagine kids. not not no not no like serious relationship. I would like I deal with a man like, I, but not as far as like serious moving together, living together, I can't do it. Right. And why? Why? They just don't want to. Why? It has to be a reason why. There has to be an explanation. I just don't. No, why? What's prohibiting you from that? I don't want. That doesn't even make sense. What? If I just don't, I don't yeah. want to live with no man. But there has to be an ultimate reason why. Is it because you feel like your masculinity would be on the line? It can't get no better. Worse than what it is now. But even though Sydney Star, that's a man. At the end of the day, when you take off all the makeup. Right. So why it's it's a mental thing. It's for you from what I perceive, is that it's something that makes you feel still feel like a man in charge and you're not demasculated from that. But your masculinity is still on the line. So it's like I'm on the ship but it ain't sunk. All right. Good answer. It seems like you're still working on it. Yes. I'm still getting used to it. You're still getting used to it. Yes. I mean, because you, you gotta. Let me, let I'm me still, I ain't gonna lie. I'm still getting used to it. You know. Let me, let me look this up real quick. Because the story came out. I'm still a virgin. <coughs> I'm a virgin in the game right now. You know? Right. Last October. Yeah. October, November, December. I mean, you're talking about less than three months. I'm still getting used to it. Still getting used to it. Yeah. It's a work in progress, Keeping man. Keeping it real. That's, I'm getting used to it. You know. Yeah. And and you know. You could look back at all the people on on Facebook that you've helped. Yes. Yeah. And and we're 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 definitely like we're living in an interesting time right now because the people who speak negatively against you are considered homophobic and you know yeah. what I'm saying like But they got a bunch of skeletons in their closets. Yeah. This ain't out yet. That's all. Yeah. 
So you think a lot of the people who are, I mean, yeah. well, you yourself, when you were homophobic, you I got were, a, Listen, I got a lot of females that told me who's, who's like, who's gay, who's undercover. I, I'm not going to, I'm not saying nothing, but you know, yeah. if they ever was to try to come at my neck or say anything, I'm going to let it be known. Right. And remember, like, for example, like, did you see any of the old uh, Eddie Murphy stand-up specials? Mm-hmm. You know, where he was raw, talking about delirious. raw delirious, where he was like saying faggot ass faggot and all this type of stuff. And then what happened? He got caught with a tranny. With a tranny. Yes. In the car. He was just giving her a ride, though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, and this is what I'm saying. It seems like the dudes who are the most homophobic and talk the most shit about gay people. I was one of the ones. Are, are really. I was one of the ones. Yeah. That was me. I, I was one of the guys that. I never do this. I never do that. And you would get I, with your friends and talk bad about gays. And I wouldn't talk bad about them because they're human. But I was just yeah. like, look at this, look at this motherfucker, look at this person. Like, I always had something to say about them. Yeah, because you were actually trying to hide. Yeah, and overcompensate. Yeah. What I was trying to fake people out, you know. Yeah. So what's next for you, man? Sky's the limit. I'm on um, GD magazine. I'm on the cover. Cover which magazine? GD. GD. What does that stand for? GED. GED. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's that's a gay magazine. Yeah, I'm on the cover of it for okay. this year. Congrats. Thanks, man. Gay okay, for the LGBT community. That's what's up. That's what's up. Hopefully, Give you know, trying to get a book, TV reality show, whatever. You know, the sky's the limit for us. Yeah, man. Well, listen. Congratulations. Thank you know, what I mean, I, I know that what you went through was, was very difficult, mm. and uh, but it seemed like. You know, you I still, I still got a little hurt in me, but you know, it is it, it, coming. Yeah. All right. I think the the more things I do, the better for me. It is like it really just yeah. me. And now you live in L.A. Yeah. Okay, and you like it better out here. Yeah. It's more accepting out here. Than more in accepting. Philly. More opportunity. You know, you got good people around me. Yeah. Leo froze it, man. You know, we can't. We can't. We can't do it right now. Right, because this was the, the Migos Thuggin' project, right? Yeah, that was going to be a big project too, but Leo, you know, blocked the play. Mike E.K. Williams told me, he was like, if you, want, if you want to make it in this industry, you have to switch it up. Because you just want to be typecast, what, you just playing all gangster movies? 